Alright, so this is an update on the Iranian situation. Um, there's not really a whole lot to go over, uh, which is unfortunate. Um, there's quite a few things that have developed. Um, there was a very large skirmish in Yemen uh, that resulted in over 100 casualties, uh, both sides combined. Um, Iraq um, has met with the Iranians and uh, they basically have decided that if there's going to be a war they will be on Iran's side. So the map sort of looks like this. It's a crescent and the Israelis and the Saudis have said as such too. All the way here from southern Lebanon through the Golan, down here through Jordan, the beginnings here of the Arabian Desert, to Kuwait. Now, everything north of this line here is the Chinese, Russian, Turkish, Iranian, Shiite uh, combine. Everything below that is the Gulf Coalition with the Saudis, uh, along with some Arab League countries uh, that are thrown in the mix, such as Egypt, Sudan to a certain extent, but not so much. And of course you also have Israel, which a few years ago is basically... Um, I don't want to necessarily say that they are friendly towards Saudi Arabia because they hate each other, but they recognize their common enemy. Which, uh, if you would have said that five years ago, people would have laughed at you, or they would have said something like that would never have happened. Uh, well, it has because they're sharing intelligence data, uh, and they are assisting each other mutually. Now, what makes things complicated is that Turkey is a NATO member, but the United States is allied with Israel, Saudi Arabia, and Egypt. But Turkey, time and time again has gone against the United States, trying to play both sides. Because Turkey, you, you understand, is a part of the combine with Iran and with Russia. But they have had their differences in the past, and they have fought each other in Syria, most notably. Now, what makes things complicated is the U.S. moving in over 1,500 personnel into Iraq to man, uh, essentially, missile batteries, and there's also some special forces that are moving in. Now, if push comes to shove and there is a war with Iran between Saudi Arabia, the United States and Israel will definitely be involved. But the only question is, to what extent and how bad can it get? Now, from everything that I've looked at, my last video was extremely well sourced. And this video is very well sourced too. But there's so much data to go over, I literally run out of characters to put in the description. I am not kidding. So this video will either get a lot of views or not a lot of views uh, compared to my first one, I'm not sure. But so far, all of the buildup with Iran has slowed, due in part because of a lack of media coverage in the United States, as well as in Russia and uh, Britain and a few other places. Even Israel, to an extent, has been rather quiet about it. And same thing with uh, Al Jazeera, El Arabiya, a few other things. So, um, the investigation into what happened with the tankers is being disputed. Um, first off, um, the Iranians are either denying it or they're keeping quiet. It depends on who's asked in their government. The United States, according to them, has intelligence, uh, but, you know, we've all heard that before, that the tankers were attacked by Iranian, uh, essentially uh, some form of special forces, like a type of frogman, for example, that placed the limpet mines either on the ships or in the water and caused the damage. Now, regardless, it is proven fact that the ships were attacked with limpet mines. The only question is, who put them there? Well, some people are conspiratorial, uh, but such a thing is very possible, that this has been a false flag operation carried out either by the Israeli Mossad, by some form of uh, Saudi special forces team, or very possibly uh, by uh, US uh, Navy SEALs. 
Now, a lot of these countries have the capabilities uh, to do these things. But here, here's the thing, though. Iran, what makes Iran so interesting is that they also have the capabilities to do this, and so does Bahrain, uh, along with, uh, I think, Qatar and a few other places. Um, even neighboring Pakistan and India have these capabilities. So nobody really knows uh, for sure who is responsible for it. But at the end of the day, it is being used as an excuse to build up U.S. military in this region, uh, once again. Um, you know, I don't really know what else to say about it. I mean, there's, there's hundreds and hundreds of news stories I could get to, but they all basically say the same thing. There's not really anything that is developed. The situation is stalled. Um, one thing I can get into is that uh, the situation, that's why I have this highlighted here, the situation in Libya uh, is very interesting because the Saudis and the Iranians are not playing a direct role, but the Egyptians are. The Egyptians have stated multiple times that they will militarily intervene, depending on the circumstances of the developments in this country. Um, it's a very complicated situation. I'm just here to focus on Iran. But strangely, Iran has not directly gotten involved and they have not provided covert aid to either side, which is interesting. Uh, another interesting thing is that Russia um, has built up uh, more military ties uh, with Egypt, which uh, it has uh, had good relations with since the, uh, the 1950s with uh, Abd Abdel Nasser. Um... But at the same time, I mean, Egypt was also a, an American puppet. And uh, sadly, to a large extent, it still is today. Um, but at, at the same time, similar to Turkey, it's also playing both sides, uh, trying to uh, screw everyone over equally. But Egypt has uh, direct co uh, cooperation with Israel and the Sinai, as well as uh, with uh, the Gaza Strip. Uh, because there is a part of the wall that is manned by the Egyptian military. So... I mean, it, there's more than that. You know, if I got into it, this would literally turn into a, a lecture, and this would be hours on end, and there's no point. You could just go look it up for yourself. Um, like I said, I don't really know what to talk about. Um, that's about it. Uh, the U.S. media, if we go over here to Syria, uh, because this also ties in with Iran, uh, th the situation in, in Idlib is uh, uh, very, very interesting. The Russians and the Turkish negotiated with Syria and some of the quote-unquote rebels on the ground there over a year ago about, you know, what if this happens, what if that happens. And what has happened is basically the Turks have a sort of demilitarized zone in the area. Um, this has been set up mostly due to U.S. pressure. Because the United States does not want the Syrians and the Russians to move into Idlib and crush the terrorists. And the reason for that is is they fear that there will be uh, mass civilian casualties. Uh, which they are not wrong in claiming. Here is what is wrong. These are not rebels. These are terrorists. There are also, interestingly, um, I wish I could remember their name. I'm not even going to post the link to it because I don't want to, you know, get in trouble. But there is a group of people that are from Uzbekistan who apparently are mercenaries of some sort. And I'm not really sure who is paying them. Very, very strange. But they are also involved in Idlib to a large extent. To a very large extent. They basically are guns for hire to the highest bidder in Idlib. Every, every terrorist organization from Al-Nusra to, uh, you know, a bunch of others have uh, paid for them. And even in some circumstances, they've had to stand down in certain fights, from what I've read, because they would fight their own men. So it's very, very strange. Um, I have seen some very shocking footage from Idlib. Um, they're singing songs praising bin Laden and the September 11th attacks. Um... They're holding up pictures of the World Trade Center crumbling. Uh, then you go look at uh, the U.S. government and you look at uh, the media 
and they're making these people sound like that they are, you know, darling angels. Uh, these people are evil. In fact, if anything, we should be helping the Russians fight them. But the reason why that the United States is trying to buy time is because they're using the terrorists in Idlib to basically play them off against uh, the Assad regime in Syria. Uh, you might be thinking, why would they do such a thing? Well, uh, Timber Sycamore uh, was the name of the operation. You could go look it up. And it was based out of uh, Beirut, uh, Lebanon, which is here. They were, uh, the CIA was uh, arming, training, and funding quote-unquote rebels, mostly out of Jordan and also in some parts of Israel. But what has happened over time is, you know, there's been ISIS, there's been all these things, and the United States is still using the t these terrorists to play off against the Assad regime to destabilize the country so they could take it over, similar to what is happening now in Iran. Thank you.